Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, and in this short video from the Excel 101 series, we will do a brief introduction to the Excel built-in random number generator and the following functions, as well as discuss some simple Monte Carlo simulations and use it to approximate pi. The simplest a random number generating function in Excel is rand, and it's a function with no arguments whatsoever, so it's just a rand followed by empty parentheses, which retrieves a random number between 0 and 1. So if we press enter now, we'll get some number between 0 and 1. The more uh, sophisticated function that you can use to uh, fine-tune your random number generation is rand between. And the rand between function gives you an integer, so a whole number, between some low value and some high value. So for example, if you want to simulate a dice throw, you can simulate a rand between from 1 until 6. And that would give you a score of 5 over here. What is also notable is whenever we input something new onto our spreadsheets, all of our random numbers are updated. And there is a faster way of doing it. If you just want to update all of the random numbers on your Excel spreadsheet, you just press F9 or, in some cases, Fn F9. So you see how I am doing F9 over and over again, and my random numbers, both for rand and rand between, are updated. But how to use random numbers for Monte Carlo simulation purposes, and in our case, to approximate pi? Consider the following. Let's assume that we want to model a circle, a unit circle, so a circle with a radius of 1 situated in the point of origin, and we want to throw a bunch of random numbers uh, onto a square with a, a side length of 2 and determine whether a point that we randomly throw onto the square is situated within the circle. To do that, we can use 2 times rand minus 1 for our x coordinate and for our y coordinate and simulate it. Um, a sufficient number of times. In our case, we simulated it a thousand times. And then we can use the circle formula to figure out whether a random point we're dealing with is within the circle. And how to do that? Well, we can use the if function and say that if x squared plus y squared is below 1, then we are indeed in the circle, and we are not in the circle, 0 otherwise. And that gives us 1 when the point is in the circle, and zero if the point is not in the circle. How can we use it to approximate pi for our 1000 simulations? Well, we know that the area of a unit circle should be pi r squared, and if r is one, it should be pi, and the area of a square with a side length of two that we actually throw the points onto is four, meaning that the area of the circle should be uh, the number of times, the fraction of times, we have got a point in the circle times 4, and that is pi, as approximated by our 1000 simulations. And here we can simply type in 4 times the average of our 1 or 0 binary variable uh, telling us whether a point is in the circle or not. And that gives us an approximation of pi of 3.22. And if we compare it to pi precisely, which, by the way, can be calculated or retrieved in Excel using the pi function with empty parentheses, which is quite uh, close to how you do the rand function, we see that our approximations, that are obviously different for every single time we throw a bunch of random numbers into our circle, uh, is pretty close, which uh, showcases the power of Monte Carlo simulations to solve a wide range of uh, complicated and hard to conceptualize tasks. And that's all there is for the random number generator in Excel and some simple applications of the Monte Carlo simulation. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful and stay tuned for even more short videos on the Excel 101.